Hello everyone. My name is Darian Ellis and I'm here with the Houston 100 powered by the Minority Report. Today my guest is Ms. Alicia Pottinger. Hi. She owns her own business, the ALP Law Firm. Please, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Please tell us about your business and what you do. Well, we're a law firm that basically advocates for men. Our particular um, topic of advocation, as we put it, or our legal you know, term that we're, mm -hmm. we're looking at is men, mm -hmm. because we believe that men should spend more time with their children. And so from there, we have entered into doing divorces, mm -hmm. um, child custody, child support, mm -hmm. and, um, and it has offshooted into other things such as wills, trusts, and probate. But our focus is helping men spend more time with their children. And so what were, what were your motivations uh, when you were starting to you know, start this business and focus it around men and their families? Actually, the motivation was when I looked at my client base, mm -hmm. most of them were men. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they weren't getting a fair shake in the court system. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they would come to me with very big issues where they'd gotten screwed over by the attorney general's office. Wow. They didn't receive appropriate um, rights um, as far as just your basic rights as a parent to be able to access your children's school records, their doctor's records, to be able to take them to a doctor um, or a therapist if they needed to. And so that's how I, I ended up advocating for men because like 60% of my my clients are men. Were so were they black men and, and how did that absolutely affect you? probably about sixty percent of my client base <laughs> at that particular time is is African American male. Right. Um, males and also male because we you know it's not just the minority but mm -hmm. males in general. So I also have a Hispanic population and, nice. and a Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So but definitely the predominantly uh, most of my clientele is African American. Okay, so what would you say? Give me give me a little insight into your background. I know you went to TSU, mm -hmm. but just give me a little bit in your background about how you started in law. Um, actually, that is quite interesting. Tell me that started back when I was like five years old. My family told me that. I said that I was going to grow up and be an attorney and be a, the president of the United States. Oh, nice. So I was like, where did that come from? Well, I didn't realize until later on in, or I didn't hear that story until I was later in an executive internship program in high school. I grew up in San Antonio mm -hmm. and I was working for an attorney doing that program. And the first time I walked into an empty courtroom, I was like, this is my destiny. So comfortable. I, I, it was, it was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. And I knew it and I loved it. And wow. from it, the rest is like history. Okay. Mm -hmm. So speaking of which, how important is mentorship um, in law? Very important. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, especially as African Americans, mm -hmm. um, we don't have families that practice law. You, you find them, you know, especially here and there, little niche groups. Mm -hmm. But as a general um, practice, you don't have anybody to mentor you in business. You don't because the law firm is a business. Mm -hmm. No one tells you that, you know, you just you can't just go there and just practice law like you were taught in school. Mm -hmm. There's a business side of the law firm that you also have to nurture and develop. And right. and those that's why a mentor would help. Also, too, coming out of, of law school, you don't really know the ins and outs. You you know, in law school, you basically think that the court is going to draft the order because mm -hmm. it says the court will do the order, da, 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 da. And you find out after you get out of law school, what? I have to draft <laughs> the order? Oh, and the judge just signs. Oh, okay. And so it's those little nuances that you, you find out and mentoring becomes a very good and important okay. Uh, so what would you say, so detaching yourself from mm -hmm. um, your, your background and, mm -hmm. and just branching out on your own, what would mm -hmm. you say was the greatest challenge you faced? The greatest challenge that I faced was because I didn't have a business background. Mm -hmm. um, um, my background at the time when I started the firm was nonprofit. 
Wow. Well, totally different. I was the program director for NAACP. I raised over a million dollars in, in grants mm-hmm. and all types of for the legal redress program for people who um, were HIV um, affected with HIV, infected or affected with Mm -hmm. HIV. And so I knew how to run and operate a nonprofit. It's very different from a business. It was extremely different from a business. And it wasn't until I would say probably about five or six years ago, ran into, actually, she's younger than me. She's my mentee, but she's also my mentor. Um, My mentee taught me that you, Lee, she calls me Lee. Lee, you need to run this, you know, like a business. You, you know, this is a business. And I said, ding, the light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do I need to do? And so I started doing research, started diving into books, started um, going to, um, conferences to try to develop the business side. Okay. So what would you say is your favorite aspect of the criminal justice and law business industry? Like what really pulls at you? Okay. The criminal justice, because I I have passion for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to do work and do post-conviction death penalty cases back in in the day. And um, I just saw that people of color and especially African American mm-hmm. were the mo- ones that were most targeted. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and back in the day, and I stopped because of I stopped doing criminal defense because of that. Um, to share a, a story, you know, I had similar clients: one black, one white. I and and to give you an idea, my black client. Mm -hmm. He was smoking, had a little bit. He was going to school, working on, on, you know, his degree, didn't have any kids. He was really thriving and moving forward. And he ended up with a little cocaine in, in his vehicle. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, my white client who had tons of dope, um, actually literally pulled was pulled over talked to a narcotics agent rolled the window down all this weed and and cocaine smoke coming out of the car so the undercover cop called a a um called a um marked car to go and pick him up it was him and his friend well when i get to court and i talk to the da's office they were saying oh well, he just needs a chance. He just needs to, yeah. There was a extreme dichotomy between the way I was treated when I was dealing and 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 representing a white male mm-hmm. versus the black male. I can understand that. And so that I knew that there was an issue, and there were issues regarding that criminal justice program. And so I kind of backed out of it. I couldn't stomach it after um, I was probably the first time that I visited a holding cell. Mm -hmm. All I could hear and all I could smell was this horrific smell that stuck with me for a whole week. And I was depressed thinking of the same thing that Malcolm X said. And he said, you know, our, our brothers and sisters were packed on in, on a slave ship like sardines. And that is, the picture that I had when I first um, visited a holding cell. So that. So for our viewers who might be students or parents of mm-hmm. students, um, mm-hmm. and they're preparing for college, even mm-hmm. though you know COVID is crazy, mm-hmm. I, I want to talk um, very importantly about college and mm-hmm. the importance of attending an HBCU like TSU mm-hmm. as opposed to any other establishments that they mm-hmm. might get accepted into. Well, we, we had this conversation <laughs> a little bit earlier. What you find is that that African Americans that go to an HBCU mm-hmm. are very prepared to venture out into the other quote-unquote right. non-historically black colleges and do very well because in a black, historically black institution, you're taught and you're given the motivation. You're taught that you are special. You're taught that you 
or um, count. You can make a difference. Right. And you don't get that from other universities. And so therefore, um, having that background mm -hmm. and having that grounding makes a significant difference as you move forward and having that confidence. I agree. I completely agree with you. So mm -hmm. I want to I want to ask you a fun question. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking in history, what's that one case, if you could have been a representative or an attorney, what's that one case you would have loved to be a part of? Hmm. I know. That's, that's a good question. Um, actually, one that I'll, 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 I would have loved to be, well, I was part and part, but I'll give you what incited me when I was early on in my, yes. in, in my career, Please. um, in, in high school doing this internship program, the mentor that I worked for was representing a black male mm -hmm. who was accused of raping his niece. Okay. And one of the things when I read the police report, I was like, Oh my God, how dare he represent? He raped his niece and da 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 da. And I just, I, you know, I was mad at him and mm -hmm. I just, how could he? And it was only during the course of the trial that I found out that this niece had been gone for three or four days at a time, would come back fed, would come back clothed, would, would come back um, and go out again doing the same thing had mental issues, acted out sexually, mm -hmm. um, and they found out that she had a pimp. Oh, wow. So it was actually the pimp who raped her and threw, cut her and threw her out into a ditch. Wow. Well, had, you know, had it, had I been on that team, and I only helped with some of the research, but I would have loved to be on that team and actually see that success when the, the jury came back not guilty for that. Wow, guy. that's amazing. Yeah. So I, I'm going to follow up and, mm -hmm. and, and just please uh, mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us where we can find you in, in your business and, and reach okay. out to you. We would love to have you as a client at the ALP Law Firm, where we are your family's law firm. Mm -hmm. We are located at 6300 West Loop South, right here in Bel Air on Suite 610. And um, bottom line, you can reach us by calling 832-930-0997 or on our website at www.alplawfirm stands for, uh, dot com stands for Alicia Lindsay Pottinger. Oh, it, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much Thank for joining me today. Thank you for inviting. So again, my name is Darian Ellis. I'm here with, with Alicia Pottinger. Miss Alicia Pottinger of the Houston 100, powered by the Minority Report. Stay tuned with us. Thank you.